your very first time buying from the plug it's a special moment it marks the beginning of a bond a bond so strong and full of trust that it can only compare to that of your barber now your first time copping from the plug can go many different ways but my first time took place way 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 back when i was seven okay that's cat but i was i was 13. now as some 13 year olds my homies and i were oblivious of how to get our hands on some sweet sweet juicy succulent magic broccoli but you know what they say if there's a will there's a way so we did what any seventh grader would do we searched that shit up on google where do i buy weed and somehow one of the first things that came up was some motherfucker on reddit like J just order a pizza that the pizza delivery guy stands a 78% chance of being baked. Just ask him where to find some gas. Simple as oh, that, yeah. man. Bet. So we call up Lil Caesars, like, hello, can I can I get a medium pepperoni pizza, please? Yeah. Yup. Yeah. I bet. And about 45 minutes later, the doorbell rings. We open the door to see some 48-year-old man who's probably going through his second divorce. Sh should we ask him? Yo, he does not know where to find that shit. Oh, uh, th that that'll be 1369. Uh, here he he you go. All right, have a good day. But wait, um, do, do, do you happen to know where to find some of that? Some of that good dope. Good dope? Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. If you wanted some ranch dip, just say that. Nah, 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 nah. What, what he's trying to say here is, do you know where to find some of that good, good shit? Ah, oh, you want some good shit, huh? You sure won't find it at Little Caesars. <laughs> this pizza is ass. Go to Pizza Hut or something. <laughs> Well, shit. What the fuck just happened? Okay, the guy on Reddit said there's a 78% chance. Maybe we just got unlucky with this one. And our dumbasses decide to order from Little Caesars again. Oh, uh, that, that, that'll be 13. Okay, new plan. Yo, I think I know a guy. So Bob locates a local plug Snapchat. Billy adds him, and bro adds back. So now we've located the plug, but we had no clue on how to go about hitting this man up. Hello, Frederick Gordon Williams. I have reason to believe you are a plug and will be able to sell us some devil's lettuce as we are minors, currently 13 years old. Just give us your home address and we will skirt and pull up soon. Sincerely, Billy. Instantly blocked, bro. Looking back, we sent the most federal message possible. We hit this man with his government name and asked him for his home address. But we had no clue that was federal. Like, huh, that's peculiar. I wonder why he blocked us. So we did what any seventh grader would do. We searched that shit up on Google. How to hit up the plug. Be simple and forward, use slang, act cool. And after conducting a little more research, we were ready to try again. So I added him on my Snapchat. Yo, 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 Big G, L let me cop some of that gas real quick, Cronum. Oh shit, he responded. H how much you need? Sh shit, wh what do I say? Search it up. Uh, th three pre-rolls, three pre-rolls. Let me get three pre-rolls, fam. All right, meet me at Stickman Park at 2.30. So now we'd set a place and a time to cop some grass. However, what Frederick Gordon Williams didn't know was that we were a whopping 13 years old. Keep in mind, we were still in middle school, but this dude was in grade 10. Shit, I'm pretty sure he was 20 years old, but but was still in grade 10, which was pretty fucking scary for us seventh graders. So we threw on some drip we believed would make us look a little bit older, and we headed off to purchase some of Satan's spinach. We arrived at the park a little bit early and as we waited we discussed our plan if he asks how old we are we're 16 if he asks our grade we're grade 10 if he asks our pronouns we are he slash bro chili he's not gonna interrogate us it's a simple business transaction Oh shit, there he is. And as Frederick approached us, I could feel my blood pressure rising. Some would say I was shitting bricks. Yo, you got the money? Uh, uh um, how much is it? How much you got? Well, I, I, I brought a, a $50 bill. Shit, it's usually 60, but... I guess I can do it for 50. Oh, th thank you so much, man. Holy shit, this is a fucking steal. Here you go, but remember, this is OG Bubba Killer Death Paralyzing Kush 9000. 
It got its name for a reason. Don't worry, we do weed all the time. Yeah, we're super teenager and shit. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, whatever, man. Well, well, have a good day, sir. And at last, 50 bones later, we had acquired some kush. Now, this wasn't our first time smoking, but our tolerance levels were low as fuck. So we pass around our first pre-roll, coughing <coughs> up a fucking storm. <coughs> And then we smoke up the next one and the next one until we're indubitably zooted. <clears throat> God damn. Are y'all feeling it? Shit. Yeah, I'm feeling it. Well, what about you, Chains? Shit, I think he's feeling it. And as we made our way back to Bob's crib, my frame rates were dropping, my eyes were drying up, and my brain cells were unresponsive. In other words, I was fucking fried. We get back to Bob's crib and all I can think about is food. The munchies had hijacked my brain, but luckily for me, Bob's mom had just went shopping. Unluckily for Bob's mom, she was gonna have to go shopping again. The boys and I threw on the amazing world of gumball on TV and we fucking demolished every single crumb from Bob's cabinet. Cause goddamn, Frederick Gordon Williams was right. They don't call it the OG Bubba Killer Death Paralyzing Kush 9000 for no reason. Getting baked is usually an exceptional experience that consists of eating food, laughing, questioning your entire existence, eating food, watching Netflix while eating more food. And you know, that's great and all, but every once in a while, that Zaza can take you to the deepest, darkest depths of the shadow realm. And trust me, that shit is not fun. So I wake up on a sunny Saturday afternoon at 1 p.m. You know, a respectable sleep in. I hop in the shower. It was a good shower. I checked the Clash of Clans base. I didn't even get raided. I eat some scrambled eggs and toast. Shit was scrumptious. And all of these things led me to believe, damn. Today's gonna be a good ass day. But little did I know, today would be the day I would look death in the eyes and fight for my life. So I finish my scrambled eggs and I pull up the boys group chat and I'm like, what's the move? And Bob's like, I don't know, let me check. So I'm like, okay, bet. There's no moves, bro. And because there was nothing to do, the boys and I would have no choice but to reside to the default move. Let's just smoke. Bet. I'm down. So the default move always takes place at the boys' home base. Bob's oh, crib. Right, right, now, right. Bob's crib was the spot to be baked for many valid reasons. First of all, bro's basement was simply comfy as fuck. Couches on lock, blankets always ready with infinite pillows. And Bob's dog, Walter, was the fucking goat but most importantly bob's cupboard was always stacked i mean this cupboard has enough food to feed a village this cupboard has more snacks than 7-eleven and this cupboard had enough calories to be in a nikocado avocado video and that shit was perfect because god damn when i get baked i become a certified fat ass so you know the drill we roll up and got a joint in rotation. And honestly, I don't know what got into me this night because I was absolutely reefing that hoe. Yo, chill. God damn. Fuck it. Let's roll another one. So we rolled up another J and I just simply could not be stopped. And I specifically remember asking, how high can I really get? And after about 30 minutes of me going bananas on these joints, I found the answer to my question. Pretty fucking high. I mean, I was beyond zooted. Like at that point, time was literally in slow motion. And it was one of those highs when your senses become extra sensitive. So I was just posted up in a blankie while munching on some pizza pops. 
and I was truly invested in those pizza pops. I mean, in that moment, I, th I thought I was the pizza pop, bro. But once I finished the pizza pops, we all decided it would be a good idea to go for a walk. However, the moment I stood up, I, I started feeling peculiar. But regardless, we went outside and at this point, it was already dark. Because in the time we were smoking at Bob's Crib, the sunny Saturday turned into a very cloudy, dark, and cold Saturday night. So Billy and Bob are walking towards this creepy looking forest and I'm like, alright, I, I think I'm too high to go into this forest, bro. Nah, don't worry, I I've been in this forest a million times, I know it like the back of my hand. Alright then. And as soon as we step into the forest, I start hearing shit, bro. Yo, did, did, did you hear that? He hear what? It, 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 sounds like, it sounds like someone's in the bushes. <laughs> nah, you're just baked as shit. <laughs> so we continue walking for about five minutes and out of nowhere it starts pouring. And this was really the point where everything shifted because I was far too faded to be out in a dark, cold, rainy forest. So I'm like, alright, let's just go back to Bob's. Yeah, facts. I, I didn't know it was going to be raining. But as we're walking back through the forest, I can undoubtedly hear something in the bushes. Okay, what the fuck was that? Oh, shit, run. Oh, hell no. Nah. Bob and Billy start hauling ass. And scared as hell, I slowly turn around to see a fucking demon coyote pack looking at me like I'm lunch, bro. And this had to be because of the second joint. But for a moment, I looked this coyote dead in the eyes. And, and I, I saw death. I saw death, bro. And in that moment, I gathered all the functioning brain cells I had left to just run. And I couldn't see where I was going. I was just hauling ass. And when I looked back, all I could see was the devious coyote eyeballs staring into my soul. And the next thing I knew, I, I stepped in a pothole and my trajectory completely changed from running away to eating shit, bro. And when I say falling felt like it was in slow motion, I mean, I had to have been falling for five minutes. But once my face made contact with the ground, th this is how I went out. I, I was about to get packed up by a pack of coyotes. As they approached, I was saying my goodbyes. But out of nowhere, I hear something in the distance. This motherfucker Bob drop kicks a coyote in the face. And it had to have been that Zaza that made these coyotes look so devious. Because after Bob socked that jit in the face, they weren't so scary. I mean, they all just ran away and dispersed. They had me like, yeah, and, and don't come back. Bitch. So we walk back to Billy's crib and I'm still tweaking off those joints. I'm like checking behind me, checking beside me, checking the sky to make sure no evil crows pick me up and kidnap me. But we get back to Bob's crib and I sit down on the couch. And just as I finally felt relieved, I get jump scared by Walter. Bro pretty much gave me a heart attack. I thought the coyotes had invaded Bob's crib to come and kill me. But it was just good old Walter coming to chill with the boys. So I got some more pizza pops and we lived happily ever after. Greening out is the worst thing you can get hit with when smoking. And coming from a greening out connoisseur, I can tell you there are many different things you'll experience when ODing on that Zaza. I mean, greening out can range anywhere from a zooted panic attack all the way to seeing yourself in third person. And of course, if you go way too far, gurping may occur. But let's start it off on a light note. When greening out, you may convince yourself you're about to fucking die. Now, I know that might sound very bad, but trust me, it's even worse than you would think. Like, this is the type of greenout that will have you fall into your knees in a Wendy's bathroom. 
The type of green out that will have you repenting your sins. And the type of green out that will have your life flashing before your eyes. Now, after a careful examination, I have determined this green out is caused by combining an excessive amount of Mary Jane with negative thoughts. This circumstance causes a chemical reaction in the brain scientifically known as getting so zooted you convince your dumbass you're about to die syndrome and i'm just gonna summarize the experience so you never have to experience it so you take too many chops out of the because let's be real it's always the chops then you begin to realize you got way too high everything starts lagging and you're on about 5 fps so you convince yourself that your your time is up and so you just lie there waiting for your impending doom that never actually happens another thing you may experience after cheap and too much keef is something i like to call a factory reset now i don't know the science behind this one but for whatever reason after smoking too much grass that shit just starts hacking your brain and it hits you with that factory reset i mean all your past experiences experiences lessons and most cherished memories straight deleted you forget your name your address the ability to stand up now this is usually the point you'll get hit with that kush coma and if you aren't familiar with the term kush coma it's a it's when the kush puts you in a coma now for me at least the one time i was put in a kush coma i didn't have a normal dream no i was put into a dream so realistic where i was just some middle-aged dude working a nine to five with a wife and kids but this dream did not last a normal dream length it deadass felt like i lived this middle-aged motherfucker's life for a month and when i woke up i didn't know what was real now i need to say this third experience will undoubtedly kill a sizable amount of brain cells so with that being said when you whiz way too much khalifa that shit is an out of body experience like you'll be chilling walking around then all of a sudden that shit hits and you're seeing yourself in third person yo what the fuck now i've tried to do a scientific analysis on this shit but to be quite frank that shit literally makes no sense like who the fuck put the camera up there for you to be able to see yourself in third person okay but anyway it doesn't stop there this change in your pov leads to an existential crisis and through this existential crisis you find the answer to life however when you go to communicate your new groundbreaking findings to the homies it just sounds like this bob Oh shit, he's alive. Bob, the 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 stars, the the tr trees, us, our family, we are life. Uh, a, a Billy. I think change is greening. And let me tell you, greening out and lying face down on the floor go hand in hand. Like you've never truly experienced greening out if you weren't looking like Neymar in the World Cup on some hardwood floor. Speaking of lying on the floor, this next level of greening out will have you becoming one with the floor. And I like to call it the hyperbolic, the hyperbolic time, time chamber. chamber now if you go super saiyan on that gas it will hit you harder than chris breezy sending your high ass into the hyperbolic, the hyperbolic time, time chamber. chamber one hour in the hyperbolic time chamber is equivalent to one minute in the outside world this shit will have you feeling like you've been laying on the ground for seven days straight and your thoughts just get stuck in this endless loop like damn i need some cereal right now wait wait I i've been lying on this floor for forever bruh i'm gonna fucking die in this infinite loop wait wait loop loop like like cheerios Damn, I need some cereal right now. It's essentially like a fever dream in real life, but even longer. Okay, but for this last level of greening out, I need to say, please do not get this zooted. Because if you do, you will probably notice a sizable drop in your IQ, and you may even get brain damage brain that fuck <clears throat> so with that being said if you do more chops than bruce lee you will experience a pain i would not wish on my worst enemy 
A pain worse than stubbing your toe, worse than hitting your funny bone, huh? and even worse than finding out your girl has your homie's Wi-Fi password. And this is the pain I call ODing on the devil's lettuce. Now, ODing on the devil's lettuce is pretty much all of the above combined into one horrible, agonizing pain. Not only do you think you're gonna die, but you forget your name, eat shit on hardwood floor, see in third person, and on top of all of that, time is in slow motion. And with all this going on, you're pretty much on 1 HP and your body is fighting to survive. And this is the point where you start throwing up and you are stuck in this infinite loop of death for what seems like an eternity. So don't green out, it's bad. Man, the very moment my stickman lips graze the tip of that sweet, sweet Zaza, it's wraps for all the food in the fridge. And as soon as that THC tickles my brain, it's GG's. The food in my closet is already consumed, bruh. And shit, when I run out of food in the crib, I give my condolences to the local McDonald's workers. Because, man, I'm about to have those motherfuckers working overtime. Now, listen, man. Shout out to all my big homies out there. But I'm going to make it clear real quick that I am not one of y'all. In fact, I make sure that I am precisely 64 pixels wide at all times. However, I will say mentally and in my heart, I am a little bit of an EDP 445. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. I like food. What I was trying to say is that I like food, and uh, usually I can resist food, but once that devil's lettuce gets a hold of my brain, I become a certified fat ass. I'm talking 750 pixels wide at least. I'm eating anything in sight, and as soon as I run out of food, I go to a new site and eat everything in sight again. And honestly, this shit is becoming a problem, bro. No shit, buddy. Your arteries are clogging. Yeah, yeah. And your blood pressure is through the roof. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that too. And you're developing type 7 diabetes. Whoa, 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 type 7? I thought there was only two types. There was, until your fat ass decided to eat 87 ice cream sandwiches. How the fuck do you stomach 87 ice cream sandwiches? Anyways, man, the munchies are lit, bro, because it's the only time you can truly taste each individual atom as it hits your tongue. Like, eating some good food while high is like a meditation, bro. Like, when you're zooted, munching on some Doritos, and you start closing your eyes, shit, you might just fuck around and become the Dorito. Now, this happens to me on a routinely basis, and as heavenly as that experience is... I must warn you, when you come out of your Dorito coma, you will be at least five bags deep in that motherfucker, and your hands may never be the same. Man, I'm still trying to recover to this day. Yeah, my Doritos still taste like fingers, bro. And if staining my fingers orange and developing a new type of diabetes sounds bad, my munchies addiction gets worse, bro. Because when you combine the zooted desire for food with the distorted judgment of the baked brain, shit, that's the perfect equation to put me in the crippling debt. Especially back in the day, because as a youngin', the only thing I was cooking was my brain cells, bro. So that meant I had to buy food. And to put it into simpleton terms, well... <sighs> I was broke as shit. I remember one hot sunny day, me and the boys were chilling at a carnival with some of our other boys, and one of those boys whips out his dat pen. And so, of course, everyone flocks around that dude and chiefs the fuck out of his dat pen, and 15 minutes later, that shit hit. But you know what hit even harder? The goddamn munchies. And so there I was, walking around the carnival, absolutely blasted with $50 to my name, looking for something to eat. And don't get me wrong, the carnival had lots of options, but they were really taxing out here. And for a dude with 50 bones to his name, I needed to find the most bang for my buck. And there I saw it. It, it was beautiful. A pink ice cream truck glistening in the summer sun. So you know I had to hop in line. And as I'm waiting in this line, the dude in front of me turns around and he's like, damn, bro, <laughs> you look high as giraffe balls, dude. What? Uh, me? Nah, nah, what? Me? No. Hey, hey, don't worry, dude. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> oh, shit. So me and my newfound homie are just chopping it up, talking about how sensational this ice cream is about to be, and soon enough, it was the homie's turn to order. Yo, dude, le let me borrow one of those cookie dough ice cream cones. All righty, here you go. That'll be 12 bucks. Mm -hmm. 
12 dollars bro that that's like half my net worth trust me it's worth it dude yo let me get a a cookie cookie uh cookie cone all right cookies and cream here you go and as i licked that thing man that shit was sensational as fuck but as i turned around i seen the baked homie step into a pothole and absolutely fumble his ice cream cone and i'm not gonna lie that was some of the saddest shit I ever seen. So I go walk over to give him some of mine. Hey, man, you, you want some cookies and cream? Oh, shit. Thank you, man. Bro, did you just drop both of our $12 ice cream cones? Fuck. Then we were back in line like nothing ever happened. But man, waiting in that sun, my mouth was parched and my eyes were dry. And by the time we made it to the end of the line, I was looking like dried up SpongeBob, bro. Hey, it's you again. Can I get the, the cookie cone, the cookie cone, the cream, the one with the cream? Yeah. And at last, after dropping half my net worth on ice cream, I took a big bite of that ice cream cone and man, I felt every sugar granule, every atom, every proton and electron contained within that bite. And for the time being, the munchies were cured. Damn, <laughs> you look high as hell. A, a little bit too high but bro are you good damn i've been there bro but don't worry i know just what you need wait, wait what's that over there <laughs> shit are you still high damn that usually works you really gotta be high as shit huh all right, listen, listen. Uh, just chill out, bro. I know you probably think you're ODing on Mary Jane, but trust me, you can't. In fact, scientists say you would need to smoke at least 20,000 joints in 15 minutes to OD. And trust me, once you hit the 16,000 joint mark, your lungs will be looking like dehydrated SpongeBob. Oh shit, speaking of dehydrated SpongeBob, you're looking like dehydrated SpongeBob. So here, drink some water. You gotta quench that cotton mouth and water's always a safe bet to flush out some of that unneeded THC. But you know what tastes better than water? Some goddamn motherfucking lemonade. So find the nearest lemonade stand and absolutely ravage that shit. Leave no lemons to spare because science says lemons contain limonene, which is a compound that can counteract the THC by calming your brain. Another solid way to calm down from a crazy high is sniffing some peppercorn. Whoa, 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 wrong line, bro. You're trying to get less high. You're supposed to sniff this one. Okay, okay, now how you feeling? Damn, still too high? God damn, how much did you smoke? <laughs> Shit. Oh, I know just what you need. A dap pen. No, 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 listen. This is no regular dap pen. This is a CBD pen. Now, when you take a hit of this bad boy, the CBD compounds in your brain will sit in the chair the THC would have sat in, meaning the THC can no longer infiltrate your brain and convince you there's somebody in your walls. Plus, the CBD can help you chill out a little bit. So here, take a hit. Oh, fuck, wrong one, wrong one. My fault, my fault. Uh, Here's the CBD one. Okay, okay. Now, before I keep telling you everything you should be doing, it's pretty important to hit you with a few common mistakes motherfuckers make when they get too high. <clears throat> Do not attempt any of the following. Call an ambulance. Call your mom. Smoke more. Eat oranges. Watch horror movies. Cook with oil. Start a fire. Going into a public setting where speaking is necessary. Spend your life savings on food. Operate heavy machinery. Convince yourself you're the only real human person on the planet and everyone else is really just an AI programmed to pretend like humans and everyone you've ever known wasn't even really a human including your mom, your brother, your home, or driving don't drive now generally if you avoid all these dumbass ideas you should be chilling so now that we got that out of the way the best way to ride out a high is to gather all the finest munchies in the game which include but are not limited to ice cream sweet heat doritos cheetos pizza some mickey d's milkshakes reese's peanut butter cups pizza rolls chicken strips any sort of fruit and of course cinnamon toast crunch and once you've prepared a meal fit for champions you can then throw on some absolutely amazing top tier youtube content or if you're really trying to get invested 
a cartoon now choosing a cartoon is gonna feel like one of the most important decisions of your life so i'm gonna let you know right now just choose anything bro your high ass could sit and watch coca melon for hours so just choose a safe bet like the most goaded show of all time the amazing world of gumball now once you've chosen your show stop thinking so much and let the show do its thing because in just a few minutes you're gonna be invested and when i say invested i mean you will invest your entire consciousness into the show like shit you'll be in the show you'll be out here posted up with gumball and darwin and you can even chop it up with gumball's fine ass mom and before you know it you're 25 episodes deep and then you step back and realize everything's gonna be all right april 20th 420 the day when everyone puts their differences aside and they just hotbox the earth's entire atmosphere man what a time to be alive now i don't know if any of y'all have gone to one of those 420 conventions before but god damn these motherfuckers be getting higher than buzz lightyear bro like at this point they aren't even baked they're, they're fucking deep fried they just be walking around hotboxing cities at a time and anyone in a 500 foot radius is gonna start feeling the effects of that mary jane like i remember my first time going to one of these things and uh i, I was still a minor with an o however i had done some pregame before the convention so let me just put it like this if i was a potato I would have been a baked potato. So heading into the convention, I was already a little bit paranoid because as I looked around, all I could see was a bunch of hippie dudes with beards and shit. And at the time, I was just repping that peach fuzz. I, I was standing out like a sore thumb. So you can only imagine how hard I was shitting my pants when my high ass saw a cop walking in my direction i instantly started brainstorming how i was gonna outmaneuver this cop so he doesn't send my ass to jail so boom busted a right dropped the shoulder hit a left and i ran into this crowd of people and i don't know about y'all but for me whenever something remotely scary happens while i'm zooted i'm gonna be paranoid for the rest of my high so in my high ass brain I i'm like a wanted criminal I, I got five stars right now so i'm out here constantly scanning the area for 12 right but i start to make some notable observations i realize half these motherfuckers are wearing sunglasses and it's not even sunny like how the fuck did i miss the memo this bad but luckily for me there's hundreds of dudes selling overpriced random ass shit so it really didn't take long for me to find a dude selling sunglasses and even though it was 25 bones for these shitty ass sunglasses i still cop them so i can hide my identity and of course the glasses have the devil's lettuce plastered all over them but i'm el chapo level wanted at this point so i'm doing anything i can to hide my identity including dropping my life savings on these dog shit glasses so i'm out here pushing through these groups of people but i'm keeping it low key and as i'm scanning to the right of me and to the left of me my dumbass pretty much walks right up to a cop and the moment i realized that homie was right in front of me looking at me i started to panic bro i felt like at this point my best option was just to confess like if i take the plea deal i'll definitely get a lower sentence but as i was stressing heavy that adrenaline starts to kick in and i know some of y'all can relate to this but the scientific breakdown shows that when you're zooted and you get into a high stress scenario the adrenaline gears up and starts beefing with the thc in your brain now if you're lucky the adrenaline will beat the thc's ass and will have you thinking properly in said stressful situation which is exactly what happened to your boy so as i transformed from a baked potato into a less baked potato this is where the table really started to turn I looked at this cop in the eyes and this motherfucker was more baked than me like shit at this point I'm about to put this dude on citizens arrest uh officer are are, are you baked right now no no it, uh there's a <clears throat> sorry there there, there seems to be a lot of cannabis in the air right now and so it's like <laughs> this poor officer probably had to pull an eight hour shift in the world's biggest hot box while trying to do his job and needless to say after realizing the officers were faded than a hoe i had no problem walking around with my peach fuzz mustache smoking on that mary jane yo when you think about it every light switch is also a dark switch light switch dark switch light switch dark switch 
Okay, class, sound it out with me. B all ball. When you really think about it, we learn to read, and then we read to learn. Uh, teacher, teacher, yeah, I, I think change is high. What the the fuck? This is kindergarten. Damn, any staircase can be a staircase to heaven if you're not careful enough. Baby, I've spent the best four years of my life with you and I can't imagine my life without you. You're, you're a one in a million, so will you marry me? So one in a million, huh? <clears throat> that means there's 8,017 people just like you. How does that make you feel? Uh. Yo, if you cut your leg off, would it hurt? Of course it's gonna hurt, bro, what? Nah, th think about it. Where would it hurt? Your leg, oh, cause you cut your leg off. Yo, what happens if you push down the gas and the brakes at the same time? Shit, let's find out. Oh shit, it, it takes a screenshot. <coughs> Damn, my eyes are dry as shit. Just close them for a minute. Damn, bro. You never actually close your eyes. You just look at the inside of your eyelids. Damn. Yo. Can anyone answer 547 to the power of three? Yes, Chains. Yo. Did you know every single odd number has an E in it? Damn. 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 Chains, are you high again? No. Wait a minute, bruh. Since you were born deaf, what language do you think in? Oh shit, you right. Damn, I just realized squirrel's cheeks are also their nut sacks. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of like your mom. What? The way she had these nuts all up in her mouth. Bro, if everyone in the world all blinked at the same time, nobody would know. Oh shit. That's facts. Oh, I just blinked. D -d Did you? Nah. Oh, I, I just blinked. Did you? Nah, nah, nah. Wait, wh what about just now? Yo, which of these buildings do you think has the most stories? Oh, it's gotta be that one, bro. That's massive. Nah, th this one's even taller. Oh, it's this one for sure. No, it's this one. No that, way. That shit's library? Tiny. Think about it. Oh, oh. the most stories. How are you supposed to get clothes? W what are you talking about, bruh? Okay, uh, imagine you had no clothes, right? H how are you supposed to get some clothes? You go to the store and purchase that shit. Bro, they're, they're not about to let you buy some clothes while your meat's hanging out. Nah, you, you just cop some clothes real fast. It's simple. Bruh, a young kid walks by and it's wraps. So you guys both have the power to read minds? Yep, yes, that's sir. right. Then, then if you both read each other's minds, whose mind are you reading? Oh, uh, I don't know. We could try. All right, yeah, yeah, sure. No, hey, that yo, was not yo, me. that was you for sure, dude. Damn, bro. When you think about it, the hospital is the only building you leave without entering. Damn. And, and and people are having the worst day of their life, the best day of their life, the last day of their life, and the first day of their life all in one building. Damn. Damn. Bro, I'm kind of scared down here. What? Why? But because I'm scared a shark's finna eat my ass. Well, when you think about it, there's more people eating sharks in the world than sharks eating people. Damn. That's actually really crazy to think about. <laughs> Fuck. Yo, every single day, there's some random motherfucker out there who took the biggest shit for that day. Yeah, yeah, he's in this room. Bro, it's literally just you and me in the room. Yo, this Taco Bell is busting. So he incorrectly assumed his position. Uh, you spelled that incorrectly. But spelled what incorrectly? Incorrectly. Yeah, yeah, but but what's incorrect? Incorrectly. Wait, wait, what? Wait, 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 guys. When you really think about it, the only time incorrectly isn't spelled incorrectly is when it's spelled incorrectly. Uh, shut the hell up. Yeah, shut the fuck up. You know... The number of people older than you never increases. It only gets smaller and smaller. Damn. What? It just got smaller. Yeah, pizza's here. Shit, I got the munchies. I'm about to fuck this shit up. Wait, wait, I ordered a mushroom pizza. Why'd they give us cheese? Hey, 
Any pizza can be a mushroom pizza if you're patient enough. Damn, I, I guess you're right. At last. <laughs> Damn, you know what I just realized? What? A pregnant woman swimming is pretty much a submarine. Are you just always this high, bruh? Yo, did you boys know your last name comes from what your ancestor used to do back in the day? Oh shit, mine's Baker. Yo, mine's Carpenter. Oh, mine's Smith for blacksmith. W well, what's yours, Johnny? Uh, it it it's Donald. W well, wait a minute. Your last name isn't Donald. It's hey, Dickinson. Yo, hey, guys, oh, guys, oh, chill. Hey, I can explain, I can explain. <laughs> <sighs> your alarm is really your theme song because it plays at the start of every episode. Why the fuck are you in my house? Yo, is Chain still mad over that chair? Yeah, well, what does this dude have against chairs? Why is it a chair? Yo, why is there sidewalks in the movie Cars? If there's no humans, this dude won't shut up. Like, just watch the fucking movie, bro. Damn, think about this. When a child is an asshole, the child gets a whooping. But when the parents are an asshole, the child gets another whooping. Shit, tell me about it, bro. Fuck. Bro, you've checked the fridge 15 times already. No good foods finna magically appear. Damn. Now that I think about it, we don't keep checking the fridge for new food, but rather we keep checking to see if our standards have dropped low enough to eat the shit that's already in the fridge. So we got Mercury, Venus, and then here's Earth. Ah, uh, yeah, chains. What do you want? If Earth is the third planet from the sun, does that make every country a third world country? You're high again. I j just get the fuck out of my class. A and look at these sheep. Hmm. Sheep. Sheep. You know how one of your teeth is called a tooth? Yeah. A and one geese is called a goose. Okay. Then why isn't one sheep called a shoop? <sighs> All right, James, a shoop. I, I can't keep doing shoop this. Shoopity doop. We have to break sheep? up. Shoop. <sighs> You know what I've been thinking? Yeah, what's up? Teenagers be whipping that shit like they're always running out of time. But old motherfuckers be driving like they got all the time in the world. But like, look at this geezer. Poor guy's practically decaying behind the wheel. But he's taking his time like he's got any time to spare. If I stab this cereal box, does that make me a cereal killer? <sighs> that one was straight ass. You gotta work on right, that I'm shit gonna work on that one. Yo. If you weigh 99 pounds and you eat a one pound burrito, does that make you 1% burrito? Yo, that's crazy because I literally just did that last night. Uh, you, you guys wouldn't believe this, but y your blood work came back and it says you're 1% burrito. Yo. Yo. Yo, picture this. Uh, imagine if Ed Sheeran was working at a bread place, right? W would that make him the ginger bread man? You're high as shit. <sighs> All right, bro, I'm a dip. Nah, d don't leave me alone in this forest, bro. Hey, when you really think about it, you're not scared to be alone in this forest. You're scared you're not alone in the forest. You feel me? <laughs> Yo, that's actually so true. What? what? <laughs> bro, you know what? Mm. Low key, if you're dead broke, robbing a bank isn't even a bad idea. Bro, there's no way some hobo's about to pull off a bank heist. Nah, but, but just think about it. Whether you successfully rob the bank or not, either way, you get over 10 years of bills you don't gotta worry about. <sighs> All right, fuck it. You got the strap? Yup. Yo, throw on your seatbelt really quick. Nah. What? Why not? Well, you see, it increases my risk of dying from cancer. What are you talking about, bro? That shit makes no sense. Just let that sink in. Oh, yeah, I got you. Yo, what's up? But still, that shit makes no sense. No, but actually think about it. Oh. Hey, bro, you want to hit? Nah, I don't smoke. I'm scared that I'll get all paranoid and shit. Hey, man, if you're paranoid that you're going to get paranoid, you're having the side effect without even smoking. It's your rule, Getting zooted is a remarkable experience. However, the moment you step into a public setting, everything 
changes. I mean, being baked in public is the equivalent of trying to run track with clown shoes on. It's the equivalent of being an astronaut in the ocean. It's like bringing a sword to a gunfight. And trust me, I've been caught lacking baked beyond belief on several occasions. That is, until I learned the art of pretending you're not zooted. So, the first order of business is covering up that dank smell. Cause shit, you and I both know if you get caught reeking of that sweet, sweet smell of Mary Jane, your cover's blown. So take some Axe, some, some cologne, some goddamn Febreze, and just douse yourself. And just when you think you put too much, spray some more, bro. And although all this axe is gonna have you smelling like a frat boy, so, it is dude. crucial that we avoid the following scenario at all costs. You get some of this. Nice. Yo, do, do, do you think you can still smell it? Nah, dude. I, I can't smell it at all. What about me? Shit. It, it's like we didn't even smoke. But truth be told, both of these motherfuckers smell like weed, bro. The next order of business is those goddamn bloodshot eyes. I I'm not gonna lie. Those eyes of yours are a dead giveaway, bro. I mean, you look fucking obliterated. L like, go look in the mirror. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're gonna need some eye drops real quick. Yeah, just a, a few drops here. You know what I'm saying? A few drops here. Yep. Yeah, that's a lot better. But you know what? F for a little safety measure, throw these hoes on. Damn. Now you're looking sober and fresh as fuck, but, but how are you feeling? Ah, uh, your mouth's a little dry, huh? Well, I got just the thing for you. Uh, you see this? Yeah, yeah shit's called water. Uh, it's gonna help you with that cotton mouth, and it'll keep you hydrated. Yeah, so some good old H2O. <sighs> nice. Yeah, no, 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 go take a look in the mirror. Yeah, you're looking good, you're looking good. But before you go outside, we gotta go over some of the basic principles of pretending you're not faded. Number one is no rambling. Talking too much can be a slippery slope, which will ultimately compromise the mission. Yo, Chains, what time is it? It's, uh, uh 107. 107? Wait. Bro, 107 uh, isn't how the time. How did the first person make the clock even know what time Yo, it what was? what is this dude but, like, talking did about? Did they just randomly decide and, you know, just, just start running with it? Hold up. Chains is baked as hell. No. And principle number two, don't talk too little. Although talking too much can sell the mission, so can talking too little. Hi there, what can I get for you? Sir. Sir, uh, what do you want? Hello, welcome to McDonald's. What the fuck do you want, bitch? Oh, uh, yeah, we got, we got a customer who's on fucking Mars. And last, but of course not least, is the golden rule for pretending you're not zooted. Just say you're tired, bro. It's undefeated. It works like a fucking charm. It hasn't failed him Has yet. Failed, failed him yet. yet. Chains, have you been smoking the devil's lettuce? Nah, I'm just tired. Oh, okay. Hey, w were you just smoking in the bathroom? <coughs> Nah, nah, I'm just really tired. Oh, okay, my fault, my fault. So you're telling me you've been found driving with a joint in your mouth, three ounces of weed, and you failed the drug test? Objection, your honor. My client here, he was tired. Innocent, he's proven innocent, he's good. So with all this being said, I think you're ready to go out. Well, where are you going anyways? What, you're going to your grandma's 89th birthday? Ah, oh, shit. Good, good luck with that, man. <sighs> oh, grandson, it's so nice to see you. It was a snowy Christmas Eve. My brother and I were watching a Christmas movie bundled up beside the fireplace while drinking a cup of hot cocoa. Man, it can't get any better than this. Or can it? What, well, what could possibly enhance these festive activities to their maximum potential? Or, or should I say, who can? So I called up the plug Randall and I'm like, 
Yo, Randall. Yo, what's up, car? L let me get some of that Christmas tree OG. Oh, shit. L let me get some of that mean green Grinch. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh. Some of that Rudolph Red Eyes. You know what I'm saying? I could, I, but the thing is, I can't deliver right now, car. What, what, why not? What, well, you see, car, me and the family are setting up milk and cookies for Santa Claus, car. Oh, shit, Randall. I didn't know you were a family man like that. Car, you already know it's Christmas Eve and shit, but uh, if you really need some of that mean green Grinch, Grinch. Come by the crib, pick it up. Say less. Randall sent his address and it was only a 15 minute drive. So we walk outside to go hop in the whip and I'm like, what? what? Where the fuck did the whip go? Uh, it, it should be right here. Oh, fuck. I mean, the entirety of the whip had been covered in snow. I mean, in these conditions, not only would it be impossible to drive, but many would say it wouldn't even be possible to walk to Randall's crib. However, on this specific Christmas Eve, there was nothing that was gonna get between us and that Christmas tree OG. So we throw on our snow attire and take our first step off the porch. And god damn, that shit was deeper than I thought. As we started our journey to Randall's house in waist high snow, I was filled with determination. The type of determination that just dipped after five minutes of wet sock possible hypothermia and no end in sight bro sh should we just head back now I, I mean we still got like 30 more minutes to go to randall's house i don't think i could do it bro chains just picture this mariah carey is playing in the background your nose is filled with the sweet scent of freshly baked cookies while we get baked as fuck and drink as much eggnog as we want Shit, you're right. We, we can't stop now. So we walked and walked in what seemed to be like endless amounts of snow. But then a brightness slowly revealed itself through the snowfall. A beautifully decorated house with reindeer on the roof and Santa Claus in the chimney. We had made it. We made it to the boy Randall's crib. Randall invites us inside and out of the Christmas spirit, the homie Randall seshes us up for the free ski. And at last, I got a taste of that Rudolph Red Eyes Kush and in that moment, it was all worth it. So me, Randall, and my brother smoke up for a while, but then my brother realizes, oh shit. It's already 11 p.m. We gotta make it back for Christmas. Damn, you're right. Wait, wait, wait. Before you jits go, cut. Take some for the road. Yo, Thank you, bro. So we begin our journey back home. Except this time, this time something was different. We were zooted as fuck. And if you've ever been in the cold while being more baked than some gingerbread, you would know that shit is ass. And as my brother and I walked through the snow, the snowfall continued to get worse and worse. And after 30 minutes of walking back home while being higher than Santa's sleigh, my legs just folded, bro. Oh shit, Chains, are you good? Bro, it, it's too far. You're gonna have to make it back without me. Bro, shut up. You're fine. You're just high oh, as fuck. Oh, Nichan. Bro, get your bitch Let ass up. Let me go. You, you need to make it back before Christmas starts. Yo, Let just get up, go. bro. Stop playing around. <sighs> oh, my fucking God. And then I fucking died. Maybe that mean green Grinch was gonna be what stole my Christmas after all. Man, you're not fucking dead. Until my brother decks my ass harder than the boughs of holly. Bro quite literally slapped me back to reality. And that was all I needed to keep going. But we only had 5 minutes to make it back to the house before Christmas. So we use everything we have left. We see the red and green glowing lights in the distance getting closer and closer and... And by a Christmas miracle, at last we could sit down on the couch bundled up next to the fireplace, watching a holiday movie, drinking some hot cocoa, all while zooted off that Christmas tree OG. Yo, you can live the rest of your life without breathing. What? N no, 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 you, you need to breathe. Hey, watch and learn, my friend. <gasps> oh, shit. W w would you look at that? Okay, class, today we're gonna be studying atoms. 
Uh, yes, James. If we're made out of atoms and we're studying atoms, does that mean atoms are studying themselves? James, are you high? N uh, no, <laughs> no. Damn. You know, you know how everyone says, oh, I took a shit, I took a shit. No, you never take a shit. You leave it. Yo, guys, I just took the meanest shit I've ever seen. Hell no. Yeah. Bro, it, isn't it crazy that you can imagine what it would feel like to lick any object you look at? Hmm. Bro, what, what, why are you looking at my balls like that? Oh, Give me hell no. Nah. You know what I just realized? Yeah, what? Walking around with one crowbar is much more suspicious than walking around with three crowbars. Bro, is that your car? Oh, shit. Yo, this burger is busting in my mouth right now, bro. I know, this shit is scrumptious. The ham is it, just exquisite. But wait, ham? There's no ham in the burger. It's a hamburger, dumbass. Of course there's ham in the burger. No, the the, the patty, it, it's made out of beef. Bruh, that's like saying a hot dog isn't made out of a dog for Pete's sake. Damn, you're high as shit. Okay, when I say sun, do you think of day or night? Pfft, obviously the day, that's when the sun's out. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. But what if I were to tell you that you see more suns in the sky at night than you do in the day. Whoa. You are hereby sentenced to 35 years in jail for repeatedly kicking a pregnant woman. <clears throat> Objection, your honor. When you really think about it, everyone in this room has repeatedly kicked a pregnant woman before. Even you, your honor. Fuck. <laughs> Holy shit. Horses are naysayers. Sir, I am very sorry to inform you. The STD results came back and you are positive for chlamydia, gonorrhea, trichomoniasis, syphilis, chlamydia, herpes, HPV, HIV, and chlamydia again. Somehow you got three cases of chlamydia. Damn, you know what that made me realize? That you should wear a condom? Nah, life is a sexually transmitted disease that will 100% lead to death. Damn right, sir, you got three days to live. You ever think about how old cars are looked at like, ha, ah, look at this dude's old ass car. He's broke as shit. Damn, a at least my car isn't as old as this dude's. Holy shit, this guy's car is a shit box. Damn. But look at that vintage car. Wow, that guy's car is insanely old. He, he's gotta be a millionaire. What the fuck? I, is that Fred Flintstone? <sighs> Whether we like it or not, we were all once inside some balls. Facts. I'm talking in the testes. Damn. I'm talking in the family jewels. Oh, I'm talking in the nut storage. Oh, I'm talking crazy. in the Ooh, semen spheres. <laughs> God damn, Todd's really laying down some mean pipe over there. You know, Todd beating down those doonies really got me thinking. Most people are made in a bed, born in a bed, and die in a bed. Damn. Damn. Bro, stairs were made to make a really big fall into a bunch of small falls. Oh, shit, are you good? You know, someone probably still got your nose from years and years ago. Got your nose, give it back. It's me. What, <laughs> what, what do you mean? It's me. I am the one who got your nose. Wait, uh, are you serious? Yes. Dude, g give it back. Or what? W well, uh, well, ugh. Give it back. No, it's my nose now. You gotta eat the frog. No, just eat the frog. Nope, one bite. I'm not doing it. You just it. gotta try I'm it. not eating the frog. It tastes like chicken. Yo, mama tastes like chicken. Come on, it's tradition. You have to fuck. eat the frog. Damn, Tra traditions are really just dead people peer pressuring us. Eat the frog, pussy. That's why you're dead, bitch. Listen, I just can't wrap my brain around it. Yeah, what's up? Can you tell me why the fuck we park on the driveways and we drive on the parkways? On it God. makes no Real. sense. 
Hey Alexa, order some extra large magnums real quick. No, we both know you get absolutely zero bitches. Alexa, Alexa, got stop. No stop. On top Ale of Alexa, you and I both know Alexa, you are shut a up. Small condom boy. <clears throat> Bro, over the next generation, we're gonna see a serious decline in the number of people who are named Alexa. Damn. Damn. Wow, that, that's quite a beautiful birdhouse right there. Yeah, do, do you think it's made out of wood? Oh yeah, for sure. And where does wood come from? Fuck do you mean where does wood come from? It, it comes from a tree. Exactly. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? People Dude, cut down bird's houses to babies? make bird houses. The oh, fuck? <laughs> yeah, I meant uh, people cut down bird houses to make bird houses. <laughs> As you get older and older, a life sentence continues to become less threatening. Yo, th there's probably a point where you just don't give a fuck. Put the money in the bag, bitch. I hereby sentence you to a life sentence in prison. Three days later. Whoops. Oh. <sighs> okay. How the fuck did somebody look at all these rocks and trees and shit and just think, yeah, I, I can make a Wi-Fi out of this. Why is it a chair, bro? Someone tell me why it's a chair. You see, the word chair actually originates from the word cathedra, which is a combination of Latin words that mean sit and down. Incidentally, the word cathedral got its name as it is the seat or chair of the bishop. Oh, uh, well, 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 uh, what? Damn, this sandwich is about to go crazy, bro. Wait, that sandwich would hit way harder if we smoked before you eat it. Okay, yeah, you right, you right. A few moments later. <coughs> damn. What? D damn! My, my sandwich went bad. Nah, wh when you think about it, your sandwich didn't go bad. Something just started eating it before you did. Whoa, that that's crazy to think about. Are, are you eating my sandwich right now? You gotta be faster than that, bro. I'm talking inside the cum factories. For real. I'm talking Damn. inside the sperm bank. For real. I'm talking inside these nuts. Fact, I'm talking crazy. in the Dwayne the Rock Johnsons. Damn. Nah, fuck you. Hey, fuck you then. That's why you eat meat. I, I don't eat meat. I, I'm vegan. Oh shit, same. But but you're still a bitch. Okay, and I still laid pipe on your mom. Yo, 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 what's going on here? He called me a bitch, and, and he said he had sexual intercourse with my mom. Yo, calm down, calm down. I, I thought you guys were both vegan. Yeah, we, we, we well, are. What about it? If you guys are both vegan, are you guys really beefing? Damn, that was unfunny as fuck. Should we just beat his ass? Yeah, 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 we should. Ah, ah, shit, damn. Ah, ah, I see here. Uh, it looks like your toothpaste hasn't been doing the job. Try this one. 9 out of 10 dentists recommend this toothpaste. Wait a minute. If dentists make their money off people having bad teeth, and 9 out of 10 dentists recommend this toothpaste, why would I choose to use this go, one? Go, go. Oh, shit, he knows. Man, you, you ever think about how the ocean is just some really big soup? Damn, uh, I guess you're right. Or, or have you ever thought about how there's more airplanes in the ocean than submarines in the sky? Oh shit, uh, apparently not. Damn, we're high as fuck. Man, you know what I just realized? Uh, what's up? Your your balls are, are, are kind of like a body bag of sorts. Y you know what I'm saying? You gotta stop looking at my balls, bro. Uh, okay, but, but, but who named it a chair? Like, who just looked at this thing and was like, oh, yup. This is gonna be called a goddamn fucking chair. Boo. Oh, ah, oh, oh, you scared me half to death. Hmm. What happens if you get scared half to death twice? Oh, I don't know. It's just a saying. Boo. Oh, oh, oh shit. Is he dying? Uh, I, I think. Damn. What, when you really think about it? Most guys will get their first set of flowers at their funeral. That's some real shit. Wait, Chains, are, are you high at a funeral? Uh, uh, no. Fulcrum, come in. Fady than a hole, fady than a hole, fady than a hole, fady than a hole, fady than a hole. Than a hole. Damn, bro. We gotta get as high as this dude. Facts. How does this motherfucker get so baked? Uh, I don't even know. Let me check. 
Oh, yep, here. Yep, yep, Just getting faded in a hole out here at the fucking goddamn Burger King, you feel me? About to take my first smacking tin off the Benjamin. Damn, it, it looks like we gotta hit the Benjamin in a Burger King. Yo, what the fuck is a Benjamin? I don't know, but I'm trying to find out. Yo, how's it going? Yeah, we're good, we're good, but um... I, I was looking to buy, uh, I was looking to buy a, a Benjamin. Damn, you dudes are about to take a trip to Benjamin City, huh? Oh, uh, yeah, we're, we're about to hit the Benjamin and, and things of that nature. Awesome. Here you go, Yodi gang. Thanks, man. Oh, and dudes, but between you and me, there's a Burger King next door, if you know what I mean. Oh, uh, uh, uh thank you. <laughs> All right, so uh, I guess we just walk in this bitch and start hotboxing this Burger King. Bro, isn't that illegal? I don't fucking know. <coughs> God damn. <coughs> this shit hits. <coughs> let me try, let me try. <coughs> damn. <coughs> um, uh, unfortunately, you guys can't be doing that in our Burger King. <clears throat> nah, 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 it, it's chill. We're, we're just getting faded than a hoe. Wait, you're getting faded than a hoe? Yeah, we're getting faded than a hoe. Shit, I know you're getting faded than a hoe. My, my bad, Yodi gang. Nah, you're good. You want a little hit? Shit, I might have to take this Benjamin to Blinkerton City, you feel me? Yeah, yeah, I feel you. <coughs> Damn, this Benjamin rips harder than a hoe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, have a good rest of your shift, man. Yeah, you too. Fuck, that. did I just say you too? Listen, I don't know about you, but this Benjamin got me feeling... Faded than a hoe, faded than a hoe, faded than a hoe, faded than a hoe, faded than a hoe. Faded than a hoe. <laughs> Wait, are, are you hearing what I'm hearing? Oh, shit. It, is that? It, it can't be. Need I say more, Yodi gang? Holy shit, it's him. Damien Luck, 925. I am the original Fulcrum. Fulcrum, come in. Yo, yo, gang, you feel me? No way. We were literally just hitting the Benjamin in this Burger King. Double Benjamin City session, shall we? The double Benjamin? Damn, bro, we gotta try the double Benjamin. Yo, where are we? I'm faded out here in Yodi Land. You feel me? No fucking way. It, it's a city full of Damien 925. Yo, this is crazy. Bro, these munchies are crazy. Facts, let's go cop some food. Holy shit. 7 Eleven is just full of motherfuckers hitting the Benjamin. <laughs> the, the whole goddamn store is hotboxed. <laughs> Yo, quick, but buy the Doritos before I pass out. Oh, fuck. Hey, hey, wake up. Wake up, hey. Hey, please wake up. Uh, I, I, I just... Hey, hey, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Uh, just got five things to say. Yeah, yeah, what is it? What is it? Faded than a hoe, 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 faded than a hoe. Than a hoe, than a hoe, than a hoe. Need I say more? Hey, but you gentlemen have a good rest of your day. Damn, light bulbs were such a good idea that they became the symbol for good ideas. God damn, I, j I just spilled my water. What? Why does water make clothes darker I I if water is clear? What the fuck? Yo, there's two guys coming. On me, on me. Oh, I clapped his ass. Yo, Billy. Yo, what's up? You see that lamp right there? Uh, yeah. What about it? That lamp in the video game uses real life electricity. Whoa. You know what I just realized? Mm. When a morgue worker dies, he still goes into work the next day. Bro, how could he go to work? He he's dead. Oh, shit. Oh, whoops, just just drop the soap. Wait, when you drop the soap, does the soap get dirty or does the floor get clean? Wait, wait guys, guys. Since I'm alone, I'm the only person in the world to ever see this peanut. 
No, I saw it too. Who the fuck are you? Yo, when did you get so much money? Man, it's the money my grandma inherited me before she died. Yo, that's that's low key like when your homie dies in Fortnite and you pick up his loot. Come on, bro, my grandma's dead. Not cool. You right, you right, my bad, my bad. Man, uh, imagine the guy that discovered milk. And think about him convincing someone else to drink it. You did what to the cow? No, 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 trust me, it's good, just drink it. Wait, you drink it too? Yeah, it's really good, look. Aw, oh, hell no. Nah. Damn, bro, M mosquitoes are some brave creatures. Considering those jits got one HP. <laughs> Facts. Yo, Chains, you need your parachute to skydive. No, no you don't. You you just need a parachute to skydive twice. No, chains. Well, what the fuck? What why did you just break my mirror? Well, well actually, mirrors don't break. They simply multiply. Oh. Damn, bro. We're all just some walking nut for real. Facts. Damn, for real. It's crazy. It's true though. Oh shit, oh shit. I I'm on fire. If you really think about it, you're not on fire. Fire is on you. Call the fire truck. Wait a minute. A fire truck? is actually oh a water truck. Oh, God damn, just call the truck. Jesus. Bro, I was on fire. Why, why didn't you just call the fire truck? <clears throat> First of all, you weren't on fire. The fire was on you. Second of all, it's a water truck. Bro, I got the munchies. We, we should cook some cookies or something. Nah, you, you don't cook cookies. You bake them. What? Th then why are they called cookies? Shit, I don't know. C cookies are just cookies. No, th that's like saying you cook bacon instead of baking it. Well, well actually, you do. What the fuck? Bro, wh what keeps the hot dog in, in like hot dog shape? Uh, it's like, it's like meat inside some animal intestine casing or some shit. Okay, so it's hot dog meat inside animal casing, right? Yeah. So, hypothetically speaking, once you eat the hot dog, it's still hot dog meat inside animal casing, but you are the animal casing. So, with that being said, when you eat the hot dog, you become the hot dog. Just let me eat my fucking hot dog, bro. And that is why Genghis Khan has the most descendants in human history. Uh, I, I actually know someone with, with more descendants than Genghis Khan. Well, that that's impossible. Who could possibly have more descendants than Genghis Khan? Genghis Khan's dad. Damn, you, you know Google Maps, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Bro, someone at Google really just said, Yup. Let's just have someone drive down every road on fucking earth. And then they did it. You know, you know how concrete and glass are, are both made out of sand? Uh, yeah, what, what about it? So if concrete and glass are both made out of sand, th does that make skyscrapers just really big sand castles? Yo. How tall is the tallest person in the world? Uh I don't know. Let me let me check. God damn, he's 8 foot 1. Holy. You you know what I'm thinking? Yeah, imagine getting railed by this absolute N No. I I was thinking at one point the tallest person has experienced the height of everyone else in the entire world. Holy shit. Paper has six sides. Shh. 
Like, like we're really just some talking nut for real. Facts. No cap. Damn. Just some breathing semen for real. That's crazy. For real. It's Facts. So true. Damn. True. For real. Hey, little man. Well, what do you want to be when you're older? I want to be a doctor and cure aging and all the diseases. Well, well, if if one day uh, we cure all the aging and all the diseases, then we will all die painful and horrible deaths. I still don't understand why it's a chair. It just doesn't make any sense. Yo, you know what I just realized? What? The size of your hands is the font size you use in sign language. Oh shit, that motherfucker Shaq must be talking in all caps. Sir, I am very sorry to inform you that uh, you are bleeding internally. Wait, I'm bleeding internally? Yes, we, we will need uh, an immediate operation and we will have to- Oh, no, 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 it's all good. In internally, that that's where the blood's supposed to be. No, no, sir, wh where are you going? This is an urgent matter. Get, get back here. You're in critical condition right now. Yo, can you pass the Apple charger really quick? Yeah, for sure. Yo, what if Apple chargers were called Apple juice? Whoa. Damn. Yo. Apple juice? Bro. Mm. You know what I just realized? Mm. You can drink a drink, but you can't food a food. Nah, that one was ass. Yeah, you right, you right. Like, I mean, we're literally just semen that can talk. So true. Facts, facts. That's facts. so crazy. For real, for real. Yo, when you put your socks on inside out, the entire universe is wearing your socks, except you. Fuck. Yo, look, it's a unicorn. Damn, it's got a, a really unique horn. Unique horn, unicorn, unique horn, unicorn, unicorn, unique horn, unique unicorn, unique horn, unique horn. Oh, leaves are called leaves because they leave the tree. Holy shit, I got an idea. Can you pass me the wrench? Rope. Glue. Piece of pizza, please. Tape. A little more tape. Damn. Big ass magnet. All right, all done. Whoa! This bad boy uses zero gas. It's completely eco-friendly. Hop in. Oh shit, there's a penny. Bro, th there's no point in picking up a penny. I it's literally worth one cent. <clears throat> How much do you make working at Wendy's? Uh, a fi 15 an hour? Oh, oh, okay. So you see there are 3,600 seconds in an hour. And because you make $15 an hour, that is exactly 0 0.416 pennies per second. So with this being said, the second it takes to pick up this penny off the ground is a net positive outcome. Oh, okay. <coughs> Wait a minute. Are stick men always naked? Hmm. Holy shit. We are stick men. What the hey, fuck? Yo. Eating magic brownies. If you've ever ingested one of these exquisite delicacies, you would know there are some clear distinctions between eating magic brownies and puffing magic clouds. First off, magic brownies are some dangerous shit, but in like a sneaky ass way. Kinda like how if I knew nothing about raccoons and I saw one chilling on the road, I would be like, aw, that's a cute ass raccoon. I I'm gonna go help it across the road and make sure it's safe. Hey, little guy. Ah, oh, oh, fuck. G God damn, fuck. You see, that's dangerous, which is exactly like when you see an innocent brownie chilling on the counter waiting to be eaten, and you're like, shit, that brownie's been chilling there for a little bit too long. I'm, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just clean it up, you know what I'm saying? 
And shit, the next thing you know, you're laying face down on the floor, four bags of Doritos deep while watching Keeping Up with the Kardashians. <clears throat> not not that that happened to me or, or something like you know <laughs> anyways secondly the brownies are made to catch you lacking i mean if you've tried edibles you'll know what i'm talking about you'll have a, a good piece like like enough to get you baked but that shit just doesn't hit bro i, I really don't feel anything you probably just didn't have enough uh, all right then l let me have some more yeah i got you They'll have you eating three brownies at a time, like, fuck, bro, I've eaten three goddamn brownies, and, and I don't feel shit, like, like, do they even work? Yes, they do, bro, L look at Eric, that motherfucker only had half, Wh what the fuck? He, he only had half a brownie? I've eaten three, them things can even take up to a few hours to hit, they'll leave you with the good old, damn, bro, these edibles ain't shit. These bad boys will have you seeing rainbows. They'll have you lagging in real life. I mean, shit, if you have enough, they'll have you out here talking to pop smoke. And the thing is, the magic clouds will introduce themselves to you before they hit. But the fucking magic brownies be coming out of nowhere on some Randy Orton shit. Leaving a motherfucker RKO'd out of nowhere. And I'm telling you, there's something about edibles that be changing your settings. Like that bitch lowers your FPS, changes your render distance, and maxes out your sensitivity. I mean, one time I gobbled down a brownie, and when I touched a blanket, I felt every bristle every microfiber and every single atom in each microfiber i mean it was really a blessing and a curse because every time my shirt would wrinkle i would take one hp but at the same time a bowl of ice cream had me busting bro because magic is some powerful shit like like one time a good friend of mine got fooled by the good old these edibles ain't shit L let me pop some more and when those edibles hit, they changed every setting this man had. Yo, Robert, you you okay? How you doing, bro? ¿Quién es Roberto? ¿Quién verga eres tú? ¿Y quién eres tú? ¿Dónde estoy? Hold up. Does, does Robert know Spanish? No, bro. That motherfucker only knows English. Shit, Robert ended up legally changing his name to Javier. And that motherfucker moved to Barcelona. He just never came back. So like I said, those magic brownies are powerful and you can do with them as you please. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs>
Like, like why a chair? Hey, bro, I got you a milkshake. Oh, thank you, man. Does a straw have one hole or two? Obviously, it's two. No, but what if it's just like one long hole? What's the point of life? If if you get a bigger bed, you you have more bedroom, but you have less bedroom. You know, like bedroom. Like, can I get a, a ice cream cone? No, no, fuck you. The ice cream machine's broken. Man, that's not fair. Well, life isn't fair, buddy. So what do you want? But if life isn't fair to everyone, then isn't life just kind of fair? Hmm. Hmm. Like, I, I just don't get it. Like, chair. Why, why is it a chair? You know, it could have been like any, any, anything. So your nose grows every time you cap. Yeah. What, what about it? So, so what if you just said your nose is going to grow? Well, that, that would be a lie, so then it, it would grow. Try it. My nose is going to grow. Yeah, I told you. But but now that it grew, it, it's not a lie. Whoa. Bro, I'm way too baked right now. Here, eat an orange. It, it helps. Nah, hold up. Are, are oranges named oranges because they're orange? Or is orange called orange because oranges are orange? Just eat the fucking orange. Boys, we got the pizza. Let's yes, go. Sir. Why the fuck is the pizza box square? Like, if, if the pizza is circle and a slice is a triangle. Yo, who the fuck invited this kid? Yo, can you pass the lighter really quick? Yeah, I got you. Wait. When you light your lighter, your lighter gets lighter until your lighter is so light that your lighter won't light. Damn, that motherfucker's spitting right now. It, it just seems weird. Like, why the fuck is it a chair? If you saw this video, you would know my mom has caught me lacking baked beyond belief before. And after that experience, I really changed my ways. I mean, I was grounded for over a year. So in that time, I decided to get my life together. I started working out, eating healthy, getting straight A's in school. Okay, that's cap, but straight B's in school. Okay, okay, B's and C's, but that, that's besides the point. The point is, I got my ass beat for coming home zooted, and I never smoked again. Until I did. <laughs> so, this incident takes place with the man, the myth, the legend, Bob. So me, Billy, and Bob are chilling at Bob's crib when Bob says the holy words. Are you guys trying to smoke? Yeah, bet. And keep in mind, the rest of my homies had been smoking regularly. But your boy was fresh out of the slammer. I mean, I was pretty much on probation at this point. And on top of that, I hadn't smoked for over a year, so my tolerance had gone to shit. So with all that being said, the smart decision was to simply not smoke. But shit, if you know me, I am not one for smart decisions. In fact, I was one for stupid decisions. So I was out here hitting this hoe like Chris Breezy. I was puffing this joint like Wiz Khalifa. When honestly, I should have been patient and just taking my time because... Who knows what my tolerance was at this point. So when it starts hitting me, it hits hard. But the homies were closely monitoring me because they knew if I got caught high again, well on probation, I would be serving 20 to life. So they're out here checking my eyes, checking my heart rate, checking my pulse. And the diagnostic was, I think you're chilling, bro. But progressively, I was getting higher and higher. So as we're there watching the most goaded cartoon, the amazing world of gumball i i start floating and i don't know if anyone else has experienced this before but sometimes when you get mad high you just forget that you even exist and you use 107 percent of your brain power to just think so i was out here floating away thinking about some random bullshit yo it's it's crazy that everyone in the world is either named quandale or they're not wait what if I'm in a simulation? No, no, no. What if I'm in an animation? Being drawn by some dude on his computer for a platform of entertainment. And a bunch of people know what I'm thinking right now. Hold up. 
is a tomato a vegetable or a fruit? But I'm brought back to earth by a text message. Oh man, uh, mom, please come home for dinner at six. Damn, I, I gotta be home for dinner at six. Oh shit, what time is it? Uh, it's 5.30. Nah, we can't let your mom find out you're cooked. So Bob whips out his emergency hide how baked you are kit. Boom, hits me with the eye drops to make my eyes less red. Douses me in cologne to cover up the smell. And apparently eating oranges also helps slow down your high. So I leave Bob's crib and as I'm walking home, I'm brainstorming all the possible scenarios. Either I play this off like a smooth criminal and nobody ever finds out, or I could get caught and I could get sentenced to 30 years. So as I walk up to my front door, my entire future is dependent on how I play this shit off. I take a deep breath and I ring the doorbell and my, my brother opens the door. The door was unlocked dumbass. Fuck, I'm off to a bad start. So I walk into the kitchen, casual as hell. Oh, Chains, how was your day? Oh, it was good. How was yours? Yeah, good shit. We're doing good. Oh, it was good. Thanks for asking. Wow, mom. This mac and cheese looks succulent. Fuck, why did I say that? Who, who the fuck says succulent? Oh, why, thank you. I switched the recipe up a little bit. Just be casual. Be casual. <laughs> Mmm, the mac and cheese. It's it's good. Thank you. Uh, so uh, what were you guys doing at Bob's? Fuck. What do I say? What do I say? B a t twister. Oh, a, a twister? Yep. Y yep. Twi twister. What wasn't it? Just you, Bob, and Billy? Uh, yep. Just a good old game of twister with the boys. Damn. Y'all are gay as hell. Yep. <clears throat> not 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 to not to being gay as hell. I just I just meant yup in general. Like you know like uh yup yeah. chains are are you feeling okay? Oh, oh fuck. Sh she knows. What well, what do I do? A little word of advice. Whenever you're in one of these situations, just cap and say you're tired. Like it works for everything. Are you high? No, I'm just tired. Damn, bro. Are, are you depressed? Mm, no. I'm just tired. Help! Help! I I'm drowning! Ugh. No, no, I'm just tired. So while I was backed into a corner, I was pretty much on trial facing life. I just used the good old, no, I I'm just really tired. I, I couldn't get much sleep last night. I actually, I think, I think I could even take a nap right now. But thank you very much for dinner. And call me Michael Jackson, cause your boy was a certified smooth criminal. And I moonwalked my high ass all the way into a nap. And god damn, that nap hit. Listen, I am no criminal. In fact, I would consider myself a good Samaritan. Type of dude who helps grandmas cross the street. Type of dude who might even pick up some trash now and then. And absolutely not the type of dude to go to jail. Now, I know for a fact I would never go to jail. Not, not because I never break the law, but because I'm fast as fuck. In the streets, they used to call me Usain Jr., bro. So there was no way you would catch me getting arrested by some 50-year-old man with a beer belly and a donut in his hand. I would be out here crossing bro up, hit him with a little body faint, leave him in the ER, bro. But with that being said, I needed that speed. I needed that speed to get out of all the dumbass situations I put myself in. Cause I'm still no valedictorian, but back in grade 9, I was nominated stupidest dumbass, and all the runner-ups were my homies. So evidently we had some stupid ass ideas. Like I remember this one time we were all looking for something to do, and if you're from a small boring city like mine, you would know there's not many fun things to do besides smoke and break the law. So what did we do? We, we smoked? And, th and then we broke the law. This story takes place at Billy's crib. So it's just me, Billy, and Bob. We're chilling playing PlayStation or whatever. And Billy's like, damn, I I'm bored as hell. We should go do something. Yeah, facts. What's something fun we could do? Shit, we could have some girls over. We got no hoes, bruh. Holeless. Shit, I forgot about that. I mean, we could get some food. You got money? You're broke, bitch. Damn, damn, you're right. 
Wait, wait, we could smoke. You got grass? Yeah, yeah, I, I do actually. Oh, oh shit, bet. So we all go outside, roll up the grass, and get baked. Then we go back inside and hop back on the PlayStation. Damn, I'm low-key still bored. Yeah, let's have some girls- You still have no hoes, bro. Fuck. I mean, we could have a bonfire. Oh shit, that's Ooh, not a bad idea. Genius. So you think this is a good place? Nah, it's too out in the open. What about here? Nah, it's too close to the school. What about here? Oh shit, th this is kind of nice. So we were looking around, we gathered up the best sticks to build the fire, and we set them up quite nicely. We lathered those bad boys in some gasoline, and apparently my high ass didn't know how fire and gas worked. So I leaned over the fire, and when I go to light it, for a second my life flashed before my eyes. So I quickly jumped back, but my friends and I are baked to perfection. So they're like, yo, dude, are, are you good? Yeah, man, I think so. Are my eyebrows still there? Uh, you, you never had eyebrows. Oh, okay. So we're all just staring at the fire in silence, thinking about random things. Damn, I need me a four-piece Popeye's combo right now. The, the meaning of life, it, it must be to evolve and become the best person you can be. God damn. Bob's mom is so hot. And as we're just chilling, watching the fire, it was pretty much sending out a smoke signal and anyone in the vicinity probably saw it. And soon we started hearing a siren in the distance. Guys, it's definitely just an ambulance. I mean, I mean, it's getting kind of loud, don't you think? No, 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 we're chilling, we're chilling. Fuck, bro, I'm out of here. Yeah, I'm way too hot for this right now. So Billy and Bob just leave. And I'm thinking... They're just being some scaredy cats. They're gonna come back. It's literally just an ambulance. Right? Man, it's getting kinda close. Oh shit, they're definitely coming for me. And then the siren just stops. Oh, I guess they're not coming for me. And then I look behind me, and I make direct eye contact with two officers. My heart literally stopped. Oh, you're fucked. Hey! I grabbed the gas, and the gas, and with all the adrenaline I had, I literally jumped on the fire, stomped it out, and hauled ass. Hey, get back here! I'm being chased by these two cops, and I am red-handed as fuck. I mean, I'm holding a liter of gasoline, a lighter, and the kush while I'm baked as hell, running from these cops. And they were on my ass, bro, because let's be real, I could have outrun these fat asses any day of the week, but I'm at a major disadvantage here. Like, I have to run carrying the can of gas while I'm zooted, bro. So sheer speed was not gonna do it, but I had to get them off my tail, or, or else I was going to jail. So I take a sharp right, and then I'm faced with these two paths. I hit a quick left, and as soon as I get out of their sight, I slide into these bushes smooth as butter. And I was scared shitless. Man, man I, can't, I can't go to jail. I, I, dro I dropped the soap way too much for all that. Holy shit, they're right there. Where'd he go? Mm, we almost had him. And we would've had him too if your fat ass didn't eat so many damn donuts. Shut up, Robert. That's why Dave fucked your wife. As soon as it was clear, I booked it straight to Billy's house. Oh, guys, it, it wasn't an ambulance. No shit. And I think it's safe to say I was paranoid for the rest of the night. Yo, I really appreciate you guys. So I'm going to be following back a bunch of people on my Instagram. So go check it out. Peace. Getting too high and ordering Chinese food three times because you keep forgetting you ordered it is one thing. But being too high in public is just one situation you don't want to be in. Like when you're too high in public, it feels like there's always a spotlight on you. And that all these random people you walk by are staring you down. But whatever you do, you can't make eye contact with anyone or else that person will snatch your soul if anyone else gets paranoid when they get high then i know you can relate i'll be out here fighting demons trying to walk to the gas station like okay relax you're gonna be okay the gas station is right there holy shit it's the cops Th they're after me Man, something in that gas smokes away all your logic and reasoning. Like, it'll have me jumping from conclusion to conclusion like I'm playing Mario. Did, did that girl just look at me? Shit, she must think I'm sexy. Wait, 
Wait, no, no, no. She, she knows I'm high. Holy shit, she's probably an undercover FBI agent. She's getting back up as I speak. I gotta get the fuck out of here. And sometimes when you're smacked in a public setting, you're just forced to talk to people. Don't make eye contact. Don't make eye contact. Hey man, do you know where the Walmart is around here? Wait, fuck. What did he say? He, he, he probably just asked how I was doing. Oh, uh, I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm, I'm good, but do you know where the Walmart is? Oh, yep. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks for asking. Phew, good thing I played that one off. Or I mean, you could always just take the good old safe route. Hey man, do you know where the Walmart when you get way too baked in public, you also feel super self-conscious about everything. A am I walking weird? H how do I even normally walk? Why am I walking like I just shit my pants? Okay, okay, this feels pretty normal. Wait, am, am I even breathing right? Fuck, now I just turned on manual breathing. Roaming the streets well baked, you'll come across lots of people. But there's just some unspoken connection between two high people. Like, no words have to be said. You see that his eyes are red, and he sees that your eyes are red. You dap each other up out of respect, and you keep it pushing. Now, when you're baked as hell in public, but you're with a group of people who are just as baked as you, it's a lot easier to relax. Because the simple thought that these people look just as stupid as I do. And honestly, at that point, you can just embrace it because you're no longer baked alone and afraid anymore. Now you can speak your truth. Hey man, do you know where the wall- Hey bro, I'ma stop you right there. I am fucking baked and therefore I cannot help you locate anything you may be looking for. And listen, being baked and Mickey D's go hand in hand. The problem is, you have to actually talk to the McDonald's guy to get your food. Like when I'm baked, I just don't have the brain capacity to communicate what I'm thinking. Shit, I'm probably gonna get a Big Mac. Hi there, what can I get for you? Uh, do, do, you, do you guys have, um, do you guys have burgers? No shit, we got burgers. Yeah, then let me get the the burger, you know, like with the the things, the um, you, you know, I'm, you know what I'm saying, like that, yeah. <sighs> Damn, you are fucking stupid, bro. And we already know being zooted at school can either be a rather delightful experience or it could be completely and utterly terrible. Once again, if you tend to get paranoid when you're high. Being at school has to be one of the worst places to be. You'll be out here ducking and dodging the teachers, absolutely shitting the bed on all your tests, and it's just overall gonna be a stressful ass experience. But on the other hand, if you get much more relaxed when you're high, then you get a nice little mood boost. You walk around with your head up and that baked grin on your face. Shit, this was never me, but I know some motherfuckers magically get a better mark on their tests when they're faded. Overall, you're just kind of living life stress-free. I mean, these two experiences are pretty much complete opposites. So I'm not trying to say being baked in public is always going to be a bad experience. But for me, I'd much rather accidentally place three orders of Chinese food from the comfort of my own home. <laughs> So, as I mentioned in my fast food video, I worked at a place called Jim Jortons. N not to be confused with the popular Canadian establishment, Tim Hortons. With that being said, at the time I had already worked at Jimmy's for a year. And to be fair, I couldn't care less if I got fired. So one day I got booked for a night shift from 6pm to 12am. But that wasn't gonna stop me and the boys from smoking up beforehand. So we're all chilling at Bob's crib, and we all take a hit. We all ate some snacks. Listen, you know the drill. But then Bob asked, are you guys trying to watch some TV? Mm, nah, I I'm really just trying to fuck up these Doritos. Y yeah, yeah, I, I could watch something. So Bob throws on the first thing that comes up. And I'm thinking, these nerds are trying to watch Dora. But literally five minutes later, Do you see Swiper the Pop? Yeah, yeah he's, he's in the bush. Yeah, you see him. Where? What, in the bush. I don't see him. He, he's right there. Where? Right behind you. Behind yes! Swiper, Swiper no. no! Swipe! Oh, Swiper. oh hell no! All of a sudden, I was invested. This show had me in a trance. We were banging out episode after episode, and when I go to check my phone, it's already 5.59. So I'm like, oh, oh shit. I, I got work in one minute. So I run to my car. Psych! I wouldn't drive. No. N not because I'm baked as shit. I was just broke, bruh. I didn't have a car. I was working at Jim Jordan's. So I haul my ass over to the bus stop. Then I, I wait there as fast as I can. 
I get on the bus, then I get off the bus, then eventually I make it to Jim Jordan's. Needless to say, I was late as hell, and of course my manager had something to say about it. But shit, I was higher than gas prices right now, man. You can't be coming in late like this. Yeah, yeah. Jonathan had to stay an extra 30 uh -huh. minutes to cover you. It is very yeah, unprofessional to show up late. Are you even listening? Yeah, uh-huh. What did I say then? For sure, for sure. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. She definitely knew I was high as hell. But she couldn't fire me. Because, honestly, nobody else wanted to work there. So I throw on the gym drip, hop on the drive through window. And I'm the type of dude whose brain just disintegrates when I'm high. So I was just chilling, you know, doing my thing. But all of a sudden, some guy comes through the drive through and tries to kill my vibe. Uh, sir. Sir, hello? Do, do you have my food? Uh, yeah, what do you, what do you want? Well, well, well I, I just ordered some food back there and I, I... Bro, what do you think this is? McDonald's? Yeah, I'm gonna keep it a stack. Most of my brain cells were still at Bob's crib watching Dora. And I guess one of my coworkers noticed that. Yeah, you should just make the drinks. I'll be on drive through. Okay. Even though I didn't have to talk to people anymore, my brain still refused to start braining. Yo, chains, chill. Wait, what? Looking back, I am really sorry for whoever ordered something that night. Because I wasn't even reading the orders. I was out here freestyling with the coffee. A little bit of this. Oh, yep, a little bit of that. Whole lot of this. Is this the black coffee? What is this, the black coffee? Uh, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Then I went on my break. Alright, Chains, what do you want? Uh, well, what do you guys have? Bro, you work here. Can I get, uh, everything? Oh, uh, everything bagel? No, no, no. Just everything. Jim Jordan's never hit so hard in my life. I was an hour into my 30-minute break demolishing a meal for five. Honestly, that day, I was probably one of the worst employees ever. But shit, I was having the time of my life. Wicka, wicka. Until some Debbie Downer tried to kill my positive vibes. Hey, who made this coffee? Uh, that'd be me. I asked for a black coffee and got a cup full of sugar and cream. Are you sure you didn't order that? And boom, she went off. I can't believe this. This is a disgrace. This is outright disrespectful. Let me talk to your manager right now. And listen, I know not everyone's brain just disconnects when they get high. But for those of you who are anything like me, don't go to work high. If you want to keep your job. Wicka wicka. Listen, most of us have been high before, and most of us have also been drunk before, but it truly takes one determined, perseverant, curious, and brave dumbass to be high and drunk at the same time. Which perfectly describes your boy way, way, way back in grade 7. See, this story is crazy because I had never been high or drunk before this incident. And all at once, I turned from just a young, innocent boy into the low IQ human I am today. So, it was grade 7 and my school had just got out for spring break. The boys and I had already planned out a little get together for one of our friend's birthdays. So after school, me and the boys link up. We go and clean up our friend Billy's house, cause you can't throw a birthday function in a dirty house. And it was dirty bro. So by the time we were done cleaning, it was already about 7.30. So that meant everyone started to show up. So the boys and I started doing your average middle school activities. By that, I mean we're wrestling, we're breaking stuff. And the girls were just posted on the couch. Cause pff, what are we supposed to do? Talk to them? Hell nah. But eventually we got tired of throwing each other around. So we're all sweaty and shit and we sit down on the couch. Leaving at least one and a half meters between us and the girls of course. And we, we just sat there. <clears throat> but then out of nowhere, Billy's like, I got a brownie. And I'm over here thinking, the fuck? The hoes don't care about your brownie, bruh. But then Billy started to elaborate. Guys, this is no ordinary brownie. I stole it from my uncle's do not eat cabinet. And he says they're magical. Oh, he probably means they're magically tasty. I need a bite of that. Does anyone want a piece? Yeah, I'll try one. Yeah, sure, I want some. I mean, some. I am kind of yes, hungry. Yes, please. So everyone has their piece, and they're kind of building up the suspense. Like, are you guys ready? Are you sure we should do this? And I'm still clueless. I'm over here thinking, it's a brownie. What's the big deal? 
the fuck? This brownie isn't magical. This shit tastes like ass. Oh, Chains, how do you feel? I feel like I just ate some dog shit, bruh. I'm gonna keep it a stack. Your uncle needs a new baker for real. No, Chains, it's not about the taste. They're grass-infused brownies. They're supposed to get you high. Man, what? I feel like this is the kind of thing you're supposed to say before I downed it. So everyone eats their piece of brownie and then continues to sit in awkward silence for like the next two hours. But then the brownie starts to hit. People are dropping like flies. And eventually, everyone felt it except me. And they're just doing high stuff like eating all the food in the kitchen, watching Netflix documentaries. But for me, the brownie still hasn't hit. And Billy notices that I'm sober and he's like, wait here. Bro goes into his mom's liquor cupboard and pours out unholy amounts of vodka and just hands me the cup. Keep in mind, I had never drank before, so I have no clue whether or not this is a lot. So I literally chugged the whole thing. Looking back, it had to have been at least five shots all at once. But man, I had no clue. So I'm, I'm just sitting there chilling on the couch, waiting for something magical to happen. And I start to think, maybe I'm just invincible. Like, like nothing can affect me. It all hit at once. The brownie and the vodka was out here running combos on me like John Cena and Randy Orton. And bro, something in that brownie changed my settings and enabled third person perspective. It was the weirdest feeling. It was like I was watching myself on a movie, but like, like I was in the movie, bro, I don't know. And apparently it also gave me the ability to teleport because I swear when I blinked, I teleported from Billy's crib to the front of a McDonald's line. And listen, I have no clue what happened in between that time, but I had no business being in a public setting right now. Hi, what can I get for you? Uh, uh sir, can I, can I help you? Yeah. Uh, what, what can I get for you? Listen, because I was high, drunk, and apparently had no social capabilities, I was spitting some nonsense to this poor McDonald's employee. Yeah, uh, do, do y'all got the, the Popeye's chicken sandwich? Uh, sir, this is McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, and let me get that Dairy Queen blizzard. Dairy Queen, what? And, uh, uh, what, what kind of nachos do you guys have? I blinked again, and we were all back at Billy's house. The very last thing I remember from that night is there was absolutely no blankets. So I was out here using literally anything I could find for a little bit of warmth. But eventually, after a long night, I passed out. <laughs> Every single person will have a different experience when they get high. And even the same person can have different experiences each time. It can depend on many things, like the strain of the grass, the environment you're in, and overall the type of person you are. But with that being said, I do know some of the most common types of people when they're high. Starting with Paranoid Peter. Paranoid Peter will take a few hits and his brain will go on overdrive, imagining the worst scenario he could possibly be in. And he'll just slowly convince himself that it's real. Hey, how you doing? Shit, he knows I'm high. He probably knows that I jaywalked last week too. Fuck, I'm going to jail for life. Buddy, are you okay? Fine, I'm high as hell and I, I illegally crossed the road last week. Next up, we got Mary with the munchies. Mary will get zooted and go ham on all the food in the vicinity. She'll have DoorDash, skip the dishes, Uber Eats, knocking on her door like they're the IRS or something. But I'm not gonna lie, I know we've all been there. No, no not with the IRS, I I'm talking about the munchies. Because food when you're high simply hits different. You go from just chewing, swallowing, and digesting your food, to dissecting and distinguishing each particular particle of that food. And I don't know why, but your brain never tells you if you're full. So you can just eat food infinitely. Next we got Chill Charlie. Chill Charlie is just so laid back. Once this dude takes a puff, he is just nonchalant. And nothing in the world can make this man start chalanting. Charlie, they found the kids in our basement. Chill out, dude. It's all gonna be alright. Hey, hands behind your back. Yo, calm down. Why are you so aggressive? And of course, we got Sleepy Sam. You see, Sleepy Sam has had a long day at work. He decides what would be a better way to end the day than to light up some Bubba Kush. <laughs> We can't forget about George with the giggles, man. George just be laughing at anything when he's high. And it's the best when you get two high Georges in a room.
You could hit George with some devastating news, and there's nothing he can do but laugh. George, I I'm so sorry, man. I, I just crashed your new Bugatti. Honestly, at this point, literally anything can make him laugh. Uh, okay, maybe not anything. Next up, we got Mumbling Martin. Some motherfuckers just be smoking and start to think they're Cardi or something. Like, after a few hits, they start to invent a whole new language. Dance like dead can be hit, man. Whoa, wait, what? <laughs> I said dead can be hit, man. C can you just speak up a little bit? <laughs> you can't hold me. You can't. Can't tell me. Speak up. And man, we all know a coffin Carl. Yeah, yeah, bro. Can you pass me that grass? <coughs> God damn. God bless America. We got sober Sophia. Yo, Sophia, take a hit. No. And what about immobilized Eric? I don't know if any of y'all have experienced this before, but sometimes Eric be smoking a little too much and it's like his controller just disconnects. Like wherever he smokes, he will be there in the same position for the whole night. Yo, yo bro, we're going home. Ain't no way Eric is still here, bruh. There has to be some sort of brain muscle disconnect when he smokes. Because you could 360 roundhouse this motherfucker and he would still be chilling in the same spot he smoked. That is, until the effect just wears off. And we got Philosopher Phil. Listen, I don't know what Phil smokes, but whatever it is, it seems to rewire his brain and turn him into a modern Aristotle. <sighs> if a time machine is ever made in the future, then it has always existed. Yeah, bro, I, I never thought about it like that. How can you prove to me that you even exist? Uh, I, I don't know, I, I just- Was math discovered? Or was it created? Uh, created- Wait, wait. No, no discover- Are we a body with a mind, or, or just a mind with a body? Hey, bro. I'm way too high for this shit. Listen, I know some of y'all have already gone to school high, but for those of you who haven't, don't do it, bro. I only went to school baked one time in my life. And after that experience, I never did it again. So this story takes place on your average Wednesday. I was still in grade 10 at this point, but I have to note, I was not a super experienced smoker. However, with that being said, I did have some homies in grade 11 that let's just say they knew what they were doing. But still, my day started off like your average high schooler. Alarm goes off, hit snooze for 15 minutes, get up stare at the wall for approximately 10 minutes, shower, eat, and head to school. This particular day, I remember being a little bit anxious because I knew I had to present my speech that I had just written the night before. But pff, English is at the end of the day, I'm chilling for now. Plus, my first class is PE, so you know how it goes. I smoked some kids in dodgeball. I went to my next class, got smoked in math. The bell rings and I dip for lunch. Guys, See y'all boys. Guys, yeah, yeah, peace out, man. You. I I do. So I link up with the gang for lunch and we kinda mob around the school for a minute, but we end up just chilling in this forest right outside our school. And this is when one of my experienced friends whips out that Zaza. We'll just call him Jimmy for now. Jimmy just asks everyone, Are you dudes trying to smoke? Yeah, for sure. Hell yup. Nah, I'm I'm all good. At first I was the only person who didn't want to. But as I sat there feeling the vibes in taking the positive energy from the surrounding vegetation, I came to the conclusion the vibes were right. It was just me and my trusted homies secluded in a peaceful area. I mean, what's the worst that could happen, right? And man, when it comes to drinking, I'm a certified heavyweight champion. But for whatever reason, when it came to smoking, I had the tolerance of a newborn baby. But then again, what would I look like taking this lil ass in hell? So I did what any dumbass individual would do. <sighs> Yo, look at Chains. Yo, chill, dude. <coughs> Damn. <coughs> so my friends are low key hyping me up. And I'm out here thinking, I am such a cool guy. I am, I am literally that guy. I'm literally that guy. But much like everything else, everyone forgot about it in five minutes. But I'm still left with all this tetrahydrocannabinol compounds 
waiting to alter my neural chemistry. So as we're walking back to the school, the THC raids my brain like the FBI. And I just eat the ground, bro. Had me looking like my controller just disconnected. And my friends just look at each other like, fuck. Maybe you should just go home, bro. Yeah, dude. There's no way you'll be able to go to class like this. So we make our way over to this bench outside and I'm weighing out my options. I'm trying to find the best scenario to get out of this alive. I narrowed it down to roughly two options. I can either go home, get whooped by my mom, and get grounded for another year and a half, or I could thug it out, just go to class, running the risk that my teacher might find out I'm baked. So me and my friends are brainstorming, using the good old pros and cons method, going home. Pros. Cons. I will get whooped. Staying at school. Pros. Cons. I might get whooped. Staying at school it is. The bell rings, my friends wish me good luck, but my next class was science, and I had the number one homie in that class. Bob. So Bob is just being a W man's. He's absolutely carrying me in this group science experiment while I'm literally passed out sleeping on the desk. Bell rings, Bob wishes me good luck and dips. Now I'm all on my own, but I just got one more class. I'm almost done. What class do I even have again? Oh, oh yeah, English, right? So I make my way to English. I sit down. All right. So today we're doing our speeches. Speeches. And my English teacher was the type of teacher who loves to catch people lacking and just put them on the spot. So of course, he sees me on another planet and decides to call me out. Uh, Chains, uh, how about you go first? Uh, I'm not, I'm not prepared. Just get up there, bud. Uh, okay. All right, whenever you're ready. <clears throat> Ch Chains, you, you can start now. Uh, okay. So, so my, my speech, it, like, it's about... The, the topic of the, of the speech, it's dinosaurs. So, t t t t so sorry, sorry. T t t t Tyrannosaurus Rex has short arms. <clears throat> yeah, it changed. Don't worry about it. You can sit down. You, you can just go tomorrow. It's all right. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, man, this is why you don't show up to school high, bro. Man, smoking too much. Greening out. ODing on the devil's lettuce. Whatever you'd like to call it, many of us have been there at least once in our lifetime. And man, I'll be the first to say it is not fun. But I do actually have a funny story about my first time greening out. I, I mean, it's funny now, but when it happened, I was shitting myself. So this story dates way back when I was just a young jit. I was still in eighth grade. And man, don't ask me why, but it takes place on a Thursday on a school night. All right, so it's a Thursday at 7 p.m. My friends and I are just headed to this girl's house. We'll call her Mary. So when me and my friends arrive at Mary's house, I quickly find out her dad is pretty chill. <coughs> Yo, what's up? And you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So we'll just say Mary was no stranger smoking some gas now and then. With that being said, I kind of was. I had only smoked a few times. And the times that I had smoked, it wasn't anything crazy. So walking into the Mary household, I could kind of tell we were going to smoke. So we all just went to her room and talked for about five minutes until all my friends started smoking. And it was out of some strangely shaped water bottle I had never seen before. And listen bro, it was a Thursday on a school night, so I wasn't really planning on smoking, right? But when you're in middle school, peer pressure just hits differently, bro. So there my dumbass was on a Thursday night using this weirdly shaped water bottle for the first time, knowing that I had a curfew of nine o'clock and I just instantly started coughing. I was definitely the least experienced out of all my friends. So I remember my homies were kind of helping me out, especially my homie, Bob. Bob brought me some water and told me to let him know if it hits too hard. I told him yeah for sure but I'm pretty sure I'm chilling because it had already been a few minutes at this point and it was safe to say I've didn't feel anything. And after 10 minutes, I remember thinking, I bet I'm definitely good by now. I probably just didn't have enough to actually get me high. So shit, maybe I can make it back for my nine o'clock curfew after all. That shit hit me like Mike Tyson in his prime, bro. I don't know why no one told me this new device would have me slumped like Nate Robinson, but it's already too late at this point. My vision started to get choppy. It's like I was running 30 frames per second in real life. 
And of course, the dry eyes starts to kick in. And I just get really hot out of nowhere. And I guess at this point, Bob could just see the panic in my face. So Bob was like, come with me. And he brought me to the bathroom. And bro was prepared. He threw down a pillow and a blanket. He was just like, you're going to be all right, bro. And as he leaves me in the dark in the bathroom, I can hear from the other room. He's definitely greening out. He's greening? Nah, not chains. Nah, my boy. Rest in peace. Rest in peace? Bro, am I about to die right now? But to be honest, my brain was way too fried to even care. The effects were getting worse by the minute. And as I laid there in the dark on Mary's bathroom floor, I felt my soul leave my body. I was just flying around space and, you know, traveling through the galaxy and shit. But I'm brought back to life because I felt my phone buzzing. And when I woke back up, I had no clue where I was. And then when I looked in the mirror, who the fuck is this guy? Well, I was out here putting the pieces together, trying to figure out who I am. Bob hits me with another, come with me. I got a ride so we can get you back home. But you have to act normal, okay? Uh... Okay, just get in the car. It was his older sister driving. And when I got in the car, I was stressing. Act, act cool, bro. Act cool, act cool. Hi, how are you? I'm not high. Fuck. She knows. And the rest of the ride was just pretty much silent. I got out of the car and I stumbled all the way over to the front door. At this point, I was praying my mom was asleep. So I called my brother to open the front door. What's up? Uh, uh door, door. At this point, I'm malfunctioning. I'm trying to explain what is happening to my brother and it pretty much just went like this. Bro, it, is mom awake? Bro, holy, you're gone, bruh. I'm sorry, but this, this is the only way, huh? What the hell, bro? I'm not gonna lie, the smack low-key woke me up a little bit. But still, I was way too big to be saved. But at least mom is in a way. Chains, get up here right now. I'm fucked. The jig is up, bro. I slowly walk up the stairs to my inevitable doom. Still high off my ass, I walk into my mom's room and seal my fate. Yeah, bro, I got grounded for a year and a half. And when I woke up to go to school the next day, I was still baked as hell. Yo, really quick, I wanted to say this video is inspired by Mostly True, the seven levels of high video. If you haven't seen it already, go check it out. And I'm not the most experienced smoker, but I generally have three stages of being high. The first stage is baked. At this level, you'll start to feel some of the usual effects like having a dry mouth or dry eyes, but you're still like a normal functioning member of society. It'll make you a little bit happier than usual, It'll make you a little bit more relaxed. But you know that voice in your head that talks whenever you think? It's like it gives that voice a microphone. Your thoughts pretty much just become louder and kind of more important in a way. But one of the major side effects that will hit you at this stage is munchies. You're gonna have the urgent desire to absolutely annihilate your cabinet. Your appetite is crazy, but all the food gets like a power up. A $2 junior chicken from McDonald's becomes a delicacy, bro. And on God, I'm not fat, but when I'm baked, I can eat like 10 of them. And that brings me to stage two, faded. As soon as you're faded, your thoughts ascend to a different realm of thinking, bro. It's like being baked, except everything is more, like the munchies increase, the dry mouth gets drier, and your eyes get more red and more dry. At this point, it's like when you're at the dentist, and you know they use that little vacuum thing to suck all the like moisture out of your mouth, and then you're left like with your mouth just dry as fuck, and you're kind of just sitting there like... And if when you're baked, it's like your thoughts got a microphone, now it's like you gave your thoughts like a megaphone with big ass speakers. I want hot Cheetos. At this point, a lot of people get paranoid, especially if you're in a public setting because you're just trying to act as normal as possible, but you're just not a normal functioning member of society at this point. Now, if you were going really crazy, you might make it to stage three. And now I do have to reiterate that for stage three especially, this is just my experience. Now with that being said, stage three, slumped. 
your soul and essence has fully ascended the real world is nothing but noise you truly and fully ascended into the astral plane you are one with the planets you are one with the sun you are one with the universe now after that shit you're probably gonna feel high for like the next week at least personally i would not recommend this stage because i definitely lost some brain cells from that experience but shit bro maybe there was just something else in the weed